Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. Today I'm very excited to check out Escape from the Aliens and Outer Space, the ultimate edition from Osprey Games. This is for two day players, take about 20 to 45 minutes to play, and it's for ages 12 plus. And in Escape from the Aliens and Outer Space, you're going to be playing as either an alien trying to kill all the humans on your spaceship, or you are going to be playing as a human trying to escape from the aliens in outer space as the title would tell you you're gonna be playing on your own unique little board with a dry erase marker and moving yourself around the board it tries to create a great sense of dread as the aliens close in on you and try to kill you does it succeed though let's open it up and i'll tell you what i think all right then we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of escape from the aliens in outer space the ultimate edition so first and foremost we got a handy dandy rule sheet it is i'd say about six seven eight pages double-sided full color full of pictures illustrations examples it is very well done it should have you up and running pretty smoothly it's also an incredibly simple game so i can teach you how to play right now so in escape from the aliens in outer space each player is going to be getting one of these little boards right here and then they're going to get one of these cards right here that will tell you whether or not you are an alien trying to uh, kill all the humans or whether you are a human trying to escape from the aliens in outer space it's going to be very difficult for the humans because if you're playing with an odd number, then there are going to be more aliens than humans. And if you're playing with an even number, then there will be the same number of humans and aliens. And it's even more difficult because as aliens kill humans, they will transform them into more aliens, which means there will be more people hunting those humans. But alas, you still can escape from the aliens in outer space. So there's different maps that you will potentially be playing as. And each one of these maps uh, are going to look slightly different. They'll have the own different fields some will be more narrow some will be more wide open some are for smaller player counts or bigger player counts and that's all covered in the rule booklet but let's go over the components and then we'll get into the gameplay so first and foremost everybody's getting this book and this book is really where it's at it has a lot of useful information so on the back it's going to talk about all the unique characters in the game because once you've played a couple times you can start making it so that each player is going to have their own unique special ability normally they will have one time use special abilities that they will be able to do which really does add a cool aspect to the game some of them are really really unique uh like there's an, a, a human that actually starts in the alien spot and just all sorts of cool stuff like that now inside though you're going to have different maps and i believe there's six different maps no eight different maps that you'll be able to play on and in the rules it will tell you probably which one you should play on based on your experience level or your player count but let's take a look at the map so first you're going to have this little symbol right here which means that is where all the aliens are going to start and this is where all the humans are going to start on this map as a human your goal is to get to one two three or four these are the escape pods if you can successfully get to the escape pods and then draw the correct card because it's not just just as easy as getting to the escape pod then you will win the game everybody else is still going to keep playing though because they can potentially win the game but now let's say that you escaped on escape pod one escape pod one is no longer in the game which means now the humans have less options on where they can go now up top here you're going to have a big listing of all the different cards in the game and what they do it's pretty well done for the most part there's a couple of them for instance like the cat where you'll have to go and check in the rules exactly how the card works but it's very nicely done that it tells you what all the different cards do and including the three most prominent cards are up on the top uh, it also tells you about all the different sectors and what they mean which is very useful as well so big thumbs up on the components in this game uh, at least with this book now each player is as i mentioned going to get this card and they will secretly look at it to figure out they are a human or an alien so what's the difference between the humans what's the difference between the aliens so if you're a human you're only going to be able to go one space at a time so for instance let's say we started right here and on return we're going to go one space so we write down k o nine because we moved one space from here to there now uh, as aliens, though, you'll be able to go potentially two spaces. So you can go one or two spaces. So aliens will be moving a bit faster. Now let's talk about all the different spots on the board and exactly what they mean. So we talked about the escape pods. We talked about the spawn points. But the other three spots are going to be these spots. These are dead zones. You cannot go into these zones. Just pretend like they're walls or something like that. The white ones are silent sectors, or silent zones. So when you go into one of those sectors and you end your turn there, you just say silent sector. And that tells everybody 
at the table that you are in fact on a white spot somewhere out there. Now, if you land on one of these grayed out spots, which are probably what you're gonna do most of the time, then you get to draw a card. You have to draw a card. This can be good, this can be bad, and it really depends on if you're playing the advanced version of the game or if you're playing the basic version of the game. If you're playing the basic version of the game, then what's gonna happen is you're gonna do one of three things. You're either going to announce the coordinates of the sector you just moved into, which can be very, very bad. You're going to announce the coordinates of any sector you choose, which means you could completely lie, or you're going to announce silence in all sectors. Now, once you've played a game or two, you'll probably start playing with the advanced version of the game, which is going to have item cards. And these item cards, they don't actually have any text on them, they just have symbols. So as you can see, they have nothing but symbols on there. And all these item cards are going to do some really cool, unique things for the humans. Only humans can use item cards. Uh, so move one extra sector during a turn, use to transform into an alien if you just want to give up. <laughs> uh, use the same rules as the aliens when it comes to attacking, so you'll be able to attack somebody and potentially uh, kill an alien, because once an alien is attacked, they are out of the game. That's one of the really unique aspects of this game, is the aliens are going to try to work together to attack the humans, but aliens can accidentally attack other aliens, and then they're knocked out of the game. So there definitely is some player elimination in this game. So when you go to a dark spot, you're going to draw one of these cards, and you're going to check to see which symbol it is. So for instance, this symbol means that I have to announce the coordinates of the sector you just moved into. So let's just pretend I was down here at say J05. I would say I'm in J05. Now, most people are going to mark down on the board what turn it is and who's there, but they have to know that this can be information or it can be misinformation. And that really is the crux of the game. That sense of just dread as you're not sure if the aliens are close to you or the humans are close to you or anything like that. But anywho, you're going to continue to go over the course of 40 rounds or until everyone has been turned into aliens or everyone has uh, escaped. Yeah, everybody's been turned into aliens because or everyone's escaped that's a human. At which point, if you escaped, then you win the game. And if you didn't escape and you got turned into an alien or you're still in the labyrinth, then you will lose the game. And that, in a nutshell, is what you're going to be doing inside Escape from the Aliens in Outer Space. Oh, Raymond, Escape from the Aliens in Outer Space, the ultimate edition from Osprey Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, two to eight players is a really nice player count, but that being said, I liked it best at the higher player counts. The more, the merrier, in my personal opinion. But when you do start playing at that higher player counts, the player elimination in the game really starts to set in. If you are the first person to escape, then you're just kind of sitting there waiting for everyone else to escape or for everyone else to die which at first can be interesting, but then it gets kind of boring. Likewise, I've seen this happen a couple times when I've played this game, actually. Um, if you're an alien and you get killed by another alien early on in the game, too bad, you're completely out of the game for the rest of the game, which can be, you know, an hour, another hour, which, oh, man, it's... That's, that's primarily at higher player counts where that takes place, but still, that is a big con. The player elimination in this game is definitely a con that I think a lot of people are going to have with this game. And I'm normally a big fan of player elimination, but in this one, it is, it is pretty bad. Continuing on with the cons, uh, the markers could be better. You know, I personally didn't have problems with any of the markers I used in this game, but I heard nonstop complaining from other people playing who were having problems with the markers. Maybe I was just putting back on the cap more frequently or something like that. That is just something that I wanted to mention because it was pretty consistent that a lot of people had issues with those markers. Another con that I have with this game is that I actually didn't like it at the lower, the lower player counts that much. At three and four players, it was okay. Two players just was not my personal cup of tea. Part of the fun of this game, at least in my personal opinion, is figuring out who the other aliens are, or figuring out who the humans are. And with the lower player counts, you sort of lose that aspect of the game, which is a little bit of a bummer. Uh, any other cons that I have with the game? Uh, no, I mean, the basic version of the game is easy enough to teach, but honestly, once you know what you're doing, you're probably going to play with the advanced version of the game each and every time, because adding those items in there is really cool, and adding those special abilities in there for each character is really stinking cool. Oh, it's all symbology, which, you know, it doesn't really bug me, the symbology on the cards, but it is something I just want to mention. Oh, the artwork is next to non-existent, so it's a your mileage may vary kind of thing. I personally didn't dig the artwork, but hey whatever moving on to the pros 
Escape from the Aliens in Outer Space is fantastic. You might have heard good things about it, and I will continue to keep on that pile of good things. If you're looking for a game at five, six, seven, eight players, and you don't mind the fact that there could be some lengthy player elimination, or you're willing to house rule it so that there's not lengthy player lay player elimination, then I wholeheartedly recommend this game. It's easy to learn, it's easy to teach, it has cool special abilities, it has cool items that you're able to pick up. It creates a genuine sense of dread and terror in this game. Especially, this is the best, when you're playing with like five, six, seven people, and you're like the only human left, and every other person at the table is an alien just talking about you. Because at the beginning of the game, it starts off that nobody's really talking about who's an alien or who's a not alien, because they're just joking around, because you want to try and lay low for a little bit but it gets to the point where when someone starts doing that first attack and then someone else is like well i'm gonna start doing that attack too and it's like oh gosh oh my gosh there's so many aliens and it's ah it's really good it creates a great sense of dread which is a not a common thing that you feel in most board games but this game does that very well i also like the components a lot i like the fact you have your own little dry erase marker board so this is the kind of thing that you can kind of play outside like i played this outside at picnic tables it doesn't necessarily have to be on a flat game table which is nice because all you need are these cards right here somewhere set down um it's pretty compact which i like you know the box is small you know the box is pretty decently sized but you can put everything into like a garbage size uh, uh ziploc bag which is nice as well if you want to be that sort of person but overall escape from the aliens in outer space really enjoy this one doesn't have its faults yes i didn't like it at the lower player counts and the player elimination can be pretty annoying in this game but when it works man it provides a really awesome unique board gaming experience i'm glad this one got brought back into print this is definitely one that you're going to want to check out if you routinely get to five six seven eight players on your game night and you want to feel the sheer terror of aliens trying to kill you so there's escape from the aliens in outer space one that i wholeheartedly recommend and will be on my shelf for a very long time if you enjoyed this video please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below let me know escape from the aliens in outer space do you think you would have a shot escaping from the aliens in outer space, assuming you are on a spaceship? Uh, for me personally, I, I'm good at short bursts of running. Like, I can run really fast for, like, 30 seconds. But once you get past that 30 seconds, it's, it's grab my side city. So I think I would be pretty good. I think uh, I've actually outrun people who are more physically fit than me because they have more stamina, but I got more of that short burst. So yes, I think I would be pretty doing pretty well escaping from the aliens in outer space but you know what i actually take that back i think i do terrible because i'm very loud i'm a loud person i have a loud nose i have a loud mouth i have loud feet i'm just a very loud person so yes i probably would die very quickly now that i think about it which is unfortunate but then i could go hunt other people which would be pretty cool as well because i'd like to see what it's like to be an alien but uh let me know in the comments below do you think you could escape from the aliens in outer space and as always thanks for your time youtube